Hello everyone, welcome to the Creative Lounge. In today's episode, we'll be talking with Anthony, an abstract artist from the Bronx. Okay. I'm excited. Well, first of all, uh, Anthony, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you at the Creative Lounge. And as an introduction, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself by telling us three things that we should know about you. Just so you know, I didn't look at any of the questions that you sent me. Even better then. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I just figured we'd have a conversation. Let's do that. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm Anthony Rondonone. Um, I am, I guess, a painter, artist. I don't know what you want to say. It feels so weird calling yourself an artist. It just feels really pretentious, so I, I try not to say that. I'm actually in a progressive rock band. Uh, we're called The Incredible Jolly or Jolly. Uh, so you can go check that out on Spotify or, or wherever. But yeah, traveled a lot of uh, Europe and North America touring. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. I feel like that's kind of a unique thing. I feel like nobody's from New York anymore, especially <laughs> like old New York. I grew up in the Bronx in the 80s and 90s. So that's like a, you know, pretty cool thing. Okay, let's start off with, with the main question, which is why did you decide to focus on art to become an artist? and on that specific style of, of paintings. I feel like uh, I, I always get this feeling that I have a few different styles. Uh, it feels a little bit all over the place to me personally. I, I hear that there's like something that kind of holds everything together, which I like. But yeah, to me, I, I have a lot of different styles. I guess I don't really focus on like one way of doing something. It's just whatever I'm feeling that day. That's how I paint. So I guess that's my style. I don't know. But yeah, I started actually focusing more on visual art uh, because we were touring full time for about uh, five or six years. So the touring actually slowed way down. Um, and then, yeah, so I suddenly had all this free time on my hands. We weren't touring for months and months out of the year. So I started painting and then I just, I basically just started an, an, an Instagram page and I started putting my work out there. I wasn't taking it super serious. Like, it's not like I was trying to start a career out of it. I just was trying to fill my creative time with something else that I love to do. Uh, and yeah, it's just like anything else. The more you do it and the more consistent you are at it, it just kind of takes on a life of its own. And here we are years later and, uh, yeah, people want to buy what I'm painting. I, I love what I'm painting. I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. Like, things are good. So that's kind of how I got here. Just, uh, yeah, consistency and, yeah, just, I guess, passion. Okay, that's, that's interesting because I would have never imagined that you were first a musician and you becoming an artist from perspective of someone who is drawing and like, creating these amazing artworks was as a result of you not, not being on the road. At the end of the day, it's just all about like creativity and expressing yourself. Um, so I'm starting to think like, it doesn't matter how it comes out. It's just like where it starts from. So for me, for a long time, it was still starting from the same place, but it was coming out in music, you know, because that's, that's the medium that I wanted to get stuff out or that's like where I saw myself going. But basically switching to like, painting and drawing it's something that again that I had in my past but that's just where I I just like kind of shifted my focus so the emotion is still coming from the same place uh, I'm just putting it onto a canvas instead of recording it onto my computer you know what I'm saying so yeah the, the seed is still coming from the same place I think that's exactly what makes your style and, and again I'm going back to that question about your artistic style because I do think that your style is very uh, very unique and a lot of the characters, uh, at least in your latest paintings, are well-known characters. Like, let's take The Simpsons, because I'm a, a huge Simpsons fan as well. At what point did you decide on, okay, this is Homer, and now I'm going to... Like, and I don't know what the right word is, but I'm just going to mess up his face. What is, what is the thought process there? Yeah, so that's kind of a weird thing. I guess if you go back and look at my older stuff, it wasn't as, like, pop or it wasn't as like recognizable characters. It was just a lot of kind of made up abstract figures. Yeah, a lot of it was just things that, <clears throat> the way that I process something happening in society or, or whatever, or just inside of me, if I'm feeling a certain way, I'm just getting a thing out. So that's basically how like the abstract figure thing started. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, as an artist, you just want to try different things. So I started adding more color. You know, I thought there was something cool about that, about like, 
I kind of have a tendency to lean in a little bit kind of creepier way or darker way. <clears throat> so I was I was just thinking it might be cool to to keep that kind of feeling, but with like these pop colors. First one I did really was uh, Cookie Monster from Sesame Street. But yeah, that's kind of how it started really with that. I thought he was just a sad character and I wanted to try painting a pop character. And the idea of that is basically it's like it's somebody who's already kind of easily uh, or quickly recognizable. And then basically what I'm trying to do is like push whatever kind of emotion I want through that that figure. It's mainly Sesame Street and, and The Simpsons because those are just shows that I have from my childhood that I'm, I was like very attached to. Um, and they represent the kind of the topics that I want to I guess talk about but yeah right now I'm actually doing a bunch of Marge Simpsons because I'm I'm actually doing a show with Guy Hepner and the tax collection and yeah it's been really fun just because like you know to do that with one character over and over again you could explore a lot of different emotions um, yeah and trying to like get those different feelings out in in different uh, yeah in different pieces it's been really cool and the next question that I wanted to ask you um, and I'm interested to, to see your take on it because I know you, you're painting mostly on, on canvases with, with actual paint rather than digitally. So do you think that technology nowadays has enhanced or reduced people's creativity? Oh, uh, it's probably enhanced it, I would have to think. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have the ability to do anything now. You know, it's it's crazy. Yeah, there was a time where it's it's hard to imagine certain things, you know. So now that we have Photoshop and digital painting uh like i can photoshop you something that looks like a real photo but just bizarre like a, a a sailboat on top of buildings and like it just opens up your creativity because now you could see these things i mean that's what i guess digital art today was doing back then you know like nobody saw a lot of these things and then somebody was able to put their imagination onto a piece of canvas and show like imagine when when somebody first saw like dolly paintings they were probably just like this is crazy like I, now i could see your imagination i could see these crazy things that you're coming up with so now it's in the public that it almost helps the public's imagination expand in a lot of ways. I mean, movies have done that the most probably, like we can imagine all of these different scenarios because of movies. Uh, but yeah, digital art is the same thing. Like now you, your your imagination just expands. You can, it's easier to imagine a city underwater because I've seen a movie or I've seen digital art of a city underwater. So now I have that really quickly. I actually think that's why a lot of people are getting more empathetic and like, a lot of people care so much about like every little thing now because like we've seen so much more emotion now through movies and through digital art and stuff it, it, yeah i just think it's like way easier to to be like oh man that sucks because i know how they must be feeling because i saw a movie that did that you know or a picture that does this so i think it's affecting people in a lot of uh weird ways some good some bad that was a great answer uh and I think the, the more you're talking about it and the more I could have relate to it and say, okay, yeah, like everything you said, like in my opinion, is 100% correct. And that leads me to my next question in terms of, is everything that an artist create an art? No, probably not. Because <laughs> if you're deliberately doing something for a reason and it has meaning behind it, I guess that's what art would be to me. Uh, but yeah, I've definitely painted things before that I just think are crap. And I mean, I guess some people would probably consider it art, but to me, it's just like, yeah, you're just putting paint on a can like paint on a canvas is different than art. Although I will say, yeah, there are things that, that don't look like art, but are considered art. Like, wasn't there just some, some, some artist who sold like an invisible sculpture and it, he was just saying like, this is like, I think that's, I mean, it's kind of stupid in a way, but there's also something kind of awesome about it. Like he's selling an idea you know it's like that kind of is art you know for somebody if he's the first person to do it you know like if i came out and did that now that would be dumb because somebody just did it but yeah i think there's something awesome about that he's just like yeah i made an invisible sculpture this is the this is a thing like he, i don't know he's selling an idea or there was a, a composer that he wrote like a silent symphony I, I don't remember it was like five minutes long or something like that and basically he just like he like raised his wand or whatever and 
the whole symphony just just like got ready to play and they just did nothing for five minutes uh but it's like it really draws you in and it seems dumb and but that's art you know uh i don't know i don't know what answer that was um so i'm not sure where i where i stand on this i don't think everything is art but i think if they've created it with an intention and they know why they did it and there's like a meaning behind it i do think that is art no matter what you think of it uh the, the way you structured your answer i think answers it exactly like the way that makes sense you know like if you've put the effort um, you had an idea and you know what your end goal is, yes. And what makes a painting a good painting in your opinion? I mean, to me, if you feel something from it, uh, that's like I said, I mean, that's usually why, that's usually when I know when I'm close to finishing something, like right when I start to feel the most from it or connect to it in a certain way. Um, yeah, that's what art is to me. It's like hearing a song and it makes you feel sad or happy or angry. Looking at a painting is the same thing. If, I, if I'm looking at a painting and I'm not feeling anything from it, then it's like, what's the point for me personally? I like the point where you're mentioning, even if you feel angry after looking at it, you know, it's not just, because I was just thinking from my perspective, I would have probably say, yeah, something that like touches me or like makes me feel happy, relates to my childhood or anything like that. But then like you go one step further where it's any emotion. Yeah, I mean, um, emotions are all equal, you know, like feeling sad isn't any worse than feeling happy. It's just a different emotion uh, and it's just whatever you want to get from it. Some people don't like feeling sad and, you know, I don't, it's probably not good to feel sad all the time, but feeling sad isn't a bad thing it's how long you feel sad for feeling happy you know it's not any better it's just it's just different so yeah to me anger is the same thing uh if anything that's kind of cool it, it's kind of cooler in a way if you're like if you can look at a piece of art and it makes you angry because then you have the opportunity to explore like well why does that make me angry and like you think think about it you know like anything that makes you think Oh, is is art like you know if it's making you feel an emotion and you can think about why you're feeling that you know maybe you see something and it makes you sad and you're not sure why you know you could you could think about it you know and go through that i don't think enough people take the time to do that um now when you're mentioning that that makes so much sense you know like i'm trying to think like what is my thought process when i look at art and i wouldn't blame it on like the world we're currently living in where everything is like scroll 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 and there's even on instagram as you mentioned earlier like you have to take the time you know it's not something you just look at it and you just okay move to the next thing you have to yeah. take the time that's a hard thing in like the day and age that we live in it's kind of a double-edged sword because like because of instagram and because of social media so many more artists have gotten their work out there and their name out there but it's so uh like disposable in in some ways like the fact that i could spend hours painting something and then somebody literally double taps it and just scrolls away from it and like as if it's nothing you know and i'm not saying that they should it's not like it's such an important thing but it's just so funny how quickly you just scroll past something and don't take the time to look at it and some people do but that's why you know going to shows and like seeing something in person or buying it you know, if you if you purchase a piece and you have it hanging on your wall, I mean, wait, I don't remember the question that I'm answering anymore, but I'm just going to keep going with this idea. Yeah, art is so disposable, like you're just kind of scrolling past it. There is something awesome to me about like just owning it and being able to like look at it every day. It, it feels like this thing you get to like, you know. The idea that art, I don't know how many people are doing this, but like I stretch my own raw canvas and I'm, I'm priming it and I'm sanding it and I'm stapling it to like this wooden frame that I'm building and then I'm painting on it and I'm touching it and like the paint is very thick, you know, like to see that in person is much different than to scroll past it on Instagram. And as an experienced artist yourself, what advice would you give to artists out there and specifically to those who are just starting their art career well i guess i'll say this i don't really love giving advice to artists because 
you don't really want to steer somebody on a different path than like they're going to go down, you know? Uh, I think the biggest thing that I would say is like being consistent uh, with what you're doing. Like, yeah, you have to do it a lot. You have to just paint all the time or whatever you're doing. If you're going to try to be a musician or something like you have to be writing all the time and recording and putting stuff out. Uh, so yeah, with painting, just consistently putting stuff out and painting and learning your tools and uh, experimenting, trying new things for me anyway, that was, that was good for me. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that, I think the more that you do it, the more you get comfortable with like, yeah, your tools and what you're doing and you learn how to kind of get in the zone quicker. You know, I, kn I know that's kind of a cliche sh thing to say, the zone, but and like, I feel like by doing it a lot, you learn how to get there quicker. And I think that's what you're trying to get to is like, yeah, being able to not be in your head and just get the emotion straight from like what you're feeling out onto campus. I think that's where personally, that's where I want to get to. And I think that's when most artists do their best stuff is yeah. When they get to that place. In terms of like what you're painting, do whatever you want. Like whatever makes you feel good, you know, don't do something just to get more likes or just to sell something or whatever. It's it's a bad place to get into because uh, you could go down like a dark hole really quick if you start doing that, I think. Um, and last question, because I'm conscious of your time as well. What would be sort of your closing words to everybody watching right now? To everybody go out and buy one of my paintings <laughs> yeah I mean I guess just uh, just if you're creating something just create stuff that you like if you're buying art just buy stuff that you like if you're writing music just write music that you like like don't really worry about what other people are saying or doing or care, care about Okay guys, that was everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this artsy interview with Anthony and please don't forget to check out his Instagram account, link in the description below. From me, Stefan Dimov, I'll see you next time.